Hey folks, so this is the contemptor all ready for the hairspray application. So up until this point what I've done is the model was uh, given a coat of anti-shine varnish and then base coated in chaos black uh, spray paint with white sprayed down at about a 45 degree angle to give a bit of pre-shading. After that I gave the whole model a coat of Vallejo model air steel um, just to give the uh, the under underpinning metal which the paint's going to go over top of and then I gave a quick wash of nun oil just to knock down the brightness of the steel so what I'm going to do from here is the whole model has had another couple of coats of varnish and now I'm going to spray it a few times with hairspray and then we can start putting the painting on top of that and then scrub it back for the chipping effects so the model's now had three coats of hairspray applied. I just use a cheap Pantene spray. Uh, you want to play around a little bit until you find one which works well for you. So what we do now is we apply the base coats over top. Uh, you just have to be careful when you're doing them not to press too hard uh, on your brush strokes otherwise you'll start dissolving the hairspray which we don't want to do until afterwards. So once the base coats are on I'll then uh, show now you... Now one of the recommendations I'll make for those of you who are painting white armour is don't actually use white until the very final stages of your highlights. The paint I'm using here is actually actually a Space Wolf Grey that I've mixed probably with two thirds uh, of white. Um, I started using just the, the Army Painter white and now I've actually started using the uh, Model Air white from Vallejo just because it's slightly thinner and it helps thin down the paint. So this very very light grey is what forms the main part of the, uh, of the armour because if you just use white paint it ends up coming out a little bit stark and unrealistic. So what I'll do, because I'm filming off the phone, I can't uh, paint and film at the same time, but I'll come back to you after the base coats are on. So here we are after the first base coat's gone on. Now as you can see, especially down on the legs and uh, on some of the chest, the paint's already started to react with the hairspray a little bit. Um, that's because I've watered down the paint. Now this is one of those times when an airbrush is very beneficial uh, for doing this. I'm just using regular brushes. But what the airbrush will allow you to do is to give a very thin uh, base coat without having to water down your paints too much. Uh, and it will just help you get that even coverage uh, without um, reacting with the hairspray. But the benefits of this method is, is that we are trying to get that sort of chipped, worn paint look. So even though the reaction started a little bit earlier than we may have liked, it's still going to come out really nice on the finished product. So the paint's going to look as though it's worn away, it's thinned down, and the uh, metal underneath will start gradually showing through in areas which aren't chipped, as well as the areas which we chip the paint off. So I'll come back to you once I've uh, finished putting the base coats on. Okay, so we've had three coats of the base colours applied. Now, again, as I said before, when you're applying it with a brush, you do get a bit of a reaction with the hairspray. So the paint comes out looking a little bit thicker than it otherwise would, but that's just a texture quality from the hairspray and underneath. And as you can see there on the leg, what I've done is I've just started uh, with a just shortcut brush to just rub away on the paint and show um, show up the metal in underneath. Um, I'll just try and see if I can position the camera so you can see it a bit better. Okay, so you can see how I've just started working in with the brush and exposing the metal and you get those nice looking paint chips. So I'm just going to keep using this effect uh, around on all the white and the blue and then what we do afterwards is we hit the whole model with a few coats of varnish and that just locks in locks in the colour so it's not going to rub away and then we can start working at the detail work. Okay, so the weathering has now been done. I've chipped away the paint, uh, especially on the sort of the feet and the edges and corners where the model's most likely to suffer wear. Um, so that includes on the chip, sorry, the Legion emblems up on the shoulder and on the knee pads as well. Still have a little bit of chipping to do on the back of the engines, uh, but once that's finished off, what I'll do is uh, give. Once that's all finished off, I'll give the model two or three really good coats of 
matte varnish and that will just seal the paint on so it won't rub off any more uh, with the hairspray and from there, that point on we can start filling in the rest of the detail and do the normal sort of washing process and everything else. The big thing to remember when you're using the hairspray method is you can't use any washes once the hairspray is on there until you've finished all your chipping and you've varnished it. Otherwise the washes will really liquefy the paint above the hairspray and it will all run off and go really really messy and uh, it will destroy the look you're looking for. So just watch out for that. Alrighty, so the detail's all been picked out now on the contemptor with the base colours. And so from here on, what we do is give the whole model quite a heavy wash uh, to tie in the colours all together and to give it that sort of weathered, oily, grimy, uh, dirty sort of look. So for the wash, I use Nun Oil and Ajax Earthshade uh, from the GW range. I used to use Devlin Mud and Bedab Black, which I probably preferred, um, but I don't have a choice now with their new colour range. So what I do is I just uh, give them a mix 50-50 of each, and then uh, apply liberally over the entire model, and then uh, go over with a cotton bud uh, just over where it's pulling and recessing, um, just so it doesn't pull too badly. Uh, it's the same technique that Templars Crusade uses on his Imperial Fists uh, and gives a, a similar sort of finish in the end. Um, possibly a little bit stronger because it's over the white base uh, but it really ties in the colours all together and gives the model a whole lot of depth. And then afterwards we go back over and uh, do the highlighting and touch-ups. Alright so here we are once the wash is complete. As you can see this has really brought out the depth to the armour and really made the white and the blue pop. Um, I'm especially happy with how it's worked out in the recesses. Um, it's given really good shading effects, especially in, in the back. I'll just turn the light on to see if we can get a bit more on there. So yeah, happy with how this has turned out. So from here, what we move on to doing is the highlighting phase. Uh, so the white gets highlighted in pure white this time, not the uh, grey I've been using earlier. And then the uh, Regal Blue, which I use on the shoulder pads, gets a highlight for with Enchanted Blue. Now, I'm modifying my technique slightly from what I did on the drop pods, uh, following watching a video from Orc Painter Nerd, I think it was. Um, and I'm going to put a highlight on the bottom edge of all the chipping to try and uh, add that sort of depth to it. So, we'll uh, get started on that. Alrighty, so the contemptor's now all highlighted. And I've also gone over some of the chip patterns with uh, the Mogmate's Rust Liquid, um, just to add some rust into the details. Especially use the model mates in the sort of ridges and cracks where rust would tend to build up. Uh, and the nice thing about the hairspray chipping method is you do get a bit of um, texture in on your chips so the model mate stuff will actually sit quite realistically just in the bottom edges of the uh, of the chips and gives gives the uh, the illusion of of paint depth on the chipping um, so I haven't used it on all the chips because um, I figure that not all of them have occurred at the same time uh, and you've got sort of a, a bit of uh, cinematic and story behind the uh, the weathering of the model so the last couple of things I have left to do on this is to do the washes and weathering on the exhaust stacks, which I'm going to be following the same method as the Forge World Masterclass book. And then I've got to put the weathering powders uh, on the model and then give the whole thing a coat of varnish. Um, and after that point we can start working on the weapons. So just to run you through over the highlighting stage, all the areas of bolt gun metal have been highlighted with mithril silver. And then on the gold parts I've gone through and highlighted them with uh, Vallejo Bright Brass uh, just gives a nice good shine to it um, and sort of offsets the, uh, the inks and stuff that I've used quite nicely. Um, I changed my colour a little bit on the emblem on the knee pad. Um, the Enchanted Blue was a little bit too close to the Regal Blue colour wise uh, so I mixed in some white just to get it a little bit, uh, a little bit lighter and get a bit more contrast on there. And then the uh, scroll work, um, it was just bleach bone to start with, been hit with the washes, and then I've just highlighted it again with bleach bone just to give that uh, sort of hard-edged highlight to it. So I'm really happy with how this model's coming out. Um, I'm 
I'm really happy with, with the hairspray weathering method and how it's working. Um, it won't work on a model much smaller than this, but uh, on, on this sort of thing or on tanks and stuff it's going to be great. So I will start using that, uh, that technique on my future stuff. Okay, so the heat discoloration is now being applied to the exhaust stacks. So I've done it with just uh, Durici Violet, uh, Crimson and Sepia washes. Um, it comes out a little bit brighter under the flash than it is in real life. Um, so yeah, now the model is ready for the application of the weathering powders. Um, I also did a little bit of uh, freehand work on the insignias, um, just to give the legion number on the shoulder pad and just to uh, put a little slogan on that front of the, uh, the purity seal. Uh, so from here on out we start using the forge world weathering powders. I uh, use light earth and uh, soot, uh, my two main ones. I use a little bit of dark earth as well uh, and probably a little bit of um, the ash grey just to simulate uh, concrete dust and stuff. So once I've applied the weathering powders I'll come back to you and we're almost there. Alrighty, so here we are with the completed weathering powders. So I focused heavily on the heavily around the bottom edges of the leg armor and on the feet uh, with light earth. And there's a few dustings on the white patches as well in the armor, uh, just to break up the armor colors, as well as a little bit on the shoulder pads as well. And then in around the engine vents uh, and exhaust pipes we've got a heavy application of chaos sorry of black soot uh, just to show that sort of smoke and exhaust build up uh, especially around the top of the model um, so the contempt is now pretty much all finished off uh, i'm really happy with how it's turned out um, i've started working on the base for it which i will show a bit more information of in another video but you can see this is uh, how it's coming along so far there's still a lot of work to be done um, so yeah keep tuned I'll be uh, uploading some more very soon once the base is all finished off and then I'll start working on the weapons so thanks for watching guys uh, please don't forget to comment rate and subscribe cheers